Hi class, uh, what I want to do in this lecture here is I just want to give you two quick examples of these confidence intervals for um, proportions. Uh, I want to just do one general one and then I want to give you one that's kind of a little bit harder um, problem and it's where we use uh, confidence intervals to kind of test a claim all right, or a belief that, uh, that someone might have. All right, well let's get through the simple one first. So the first one here. In a recent survey of 600 WCC students, it was found that 350 use social media every day. All right, let's construct a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of WCC students that use social media every day. Okay, first off, just looking at this, this number 600 here, that's our sample size. The 350 are the number of people who use, or the number of students that use social media every day. So that's my x variable. So my sample proportion then, p hat is equal to, you're just going to take the 350 divided by 600. Let's take our calculator. Take 350 divided by 600 and we got 0.583 which is roughly what I'm saying here is uh, roughly 58.3 percent of WCC students use uh, social media every day okay um, well we know that that is probably not the exact proportion of WCC students that use social media every day so what could the real proportion be well that's why we need these confidence intervals so the good news is, is our calculator will do this for us so to find this, you're always going to press the stat button, so stat. You're going to scroll over to tests. And you're going to scroll down till you see this one dash prop z interval. This is a one proportion z interval. All right? This is the confidence interval option we're going to use in our calculator for this section. So I'm going to hit enter. X was the number of students who use social media every day, which is 350. N was the sample size, which was 600. And your calculator will always be default 2.95. So you have to be very careful with the problem mass here. Like problem mass for 99%. So I need to change that to 0.99. And I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to write hit calculate. And I'm going to I'll go to three decimal places here. My answer here is 0.531 comma to 0.635. So my 99% confidence interval was 0 0.531 to 0 0.635. So basically what I'm saying here is this. I am 99% confident that the proportion of college students who use social media every day is somewhere between 53.1% and 63.5%. That's what I'm saying here. I know it's probably not exactly that 58.3% I got, but I'm 99% sure it's between those two numbers. All right, and this is just a pretty straightforward problem. Um, as you can see, using your calculator for this, it, it produces the results for you really, really quickly. All right. Um, I want to do a second example here that's a little bit harder, okay? And it's going to be kind of our first introduction to statistical inference or how you use, what type of conclusions you can draw from data. All right, so here's the problem. A certain WCC professor believes that less than 50% of college students, so here's my claim, or a certain professor, not my claim. The claim is that less than 50% of college students watch the online lectures the professor posts. To test his belief, he samples 500 college students, so that's our N, and finds that 240 of those college students watch the online lectures posted by the professor. Okay, so just right off the, the bat here, the sample size is 500. X here, the number of students who are watching the online lectures is 240. So that means my P hat is equal to 240 divided by 500. Let's see what that is. All right, it's 0 0.48. 
So what this is saying is based on this sample, 48% of college students are watching the online lectures that their professor posts. Well, that's less than 50%, right? So obviously the professor is correct. But that's not exactly how data and statistics work. Okay, we know that if we were to um, resample 500 students, we would get a different result. And this is not the exact value or the real proportion. Okay, this is just from a sample of 500. So what could the real proportion be? Okay, and what do I mean by does this provide evidence to support the professor's belief? Now it says use a 95% confidence interval to test or basically to check the professor's belief. So let's just take this data and let's see what a 95% confidence interval produces for us. So I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to scroll over to test. I'm going to go down always to one dash prop Z int for this. I'm going to hit enter. I had the 240 students who watched the videos out of the 500 students. I have to change my confidence level to 0.95. And then I'm going to hit calculate. And this is what I get. I get it could be anywhere from 0.436 to 0.523. So 0 0.436 to 0 0.523. So putting this in terms of percentages, I'm saying, look, I'm 95% confident that the real proportion of college students that watch their videos that the professor posts is anywhere between 43.6% and 52.3%. That's the what the possible values could be based off this sample. So remember what the professor said. The professor said it's less than 50%. But this is what our confidence interval is saying. It could be anywhere in here. Okay, so does this support the professor's claim that less than 50%? No, it does not. Okay, so even though the professor got a, uh, a result of 48%, we can't say for sure that less than 50% watch the students. And the reason is, this is because the confidence interval contains values above 50%. So the real proportion could be above 50%. So we can't say for sure that less than 50% of college students are watching the online lectures that the professor posts. So always be careful when you see statistics like this, um, especially from surveys. Don't take the real value, the given value like 48% as what the actual value is. You have to dig deeper into the numbers and, and look at the polls and surveys, margins of errors, and, and look at the confidence intervals. All right, class, hope that helped.